Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, it's time to take our hot topic. And this talks about ex-governors, lawmakers, others demand a new constitution for Nigeria. Joining us to have a conversation is Justice Uwebo. He's a human rights lawyer joining us from Abuja. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure once more. Thank you. Okay, so we're talking about the Nigerian constitution. Now, many have said that the constitution is a little bit obsolete. Um, uh, there are a lot of things that just don't, it's not necessary anymore, and we need some form of reconfiguration for the constitution, especially if we're looking at um, a renewed hope. I mean, that's the era we are now in. So if we're talking about a renewed hope, if we're talking about prosperity for Nigeria, um, a lot of people say we need to look at our constitution and try to look for ways to just reduce it, if I can use that word. But first, I mean, you are a human rights lawyer, so definitely you have access to the Constitution. You know what it's all about. You've probably read it. What do you think about the Nigerian Constitution? Would you agree that it is a little bit obsolete? Well, the truth is that um, I believe and I feel and I think that uh, uh, the Constitution is due for a realistic uh, amendment. Uh, I may not be advocating for uh, scrapping up uh, the whole constitution entirely. For me, the 1999 constitution as amended uh, also has some good provisions in the constitution, but uh, there are also some provisions in the constitution that are already absolute and again, uh, we need to amend. In fact, we need to continue amending the constitution in order to be in standing with the development and norms of the society. Because as the society grows, the law grows along with the society. So I believe and I agree to the fact that the constitution at this point in time needs a serious and holistic amendment. Okay, so speaking about a serious and holistic amendment, like you've said, what do you think are some specific, specific lines or um, specific areas of the Constitution that you think, according to you, I mean, this is just your own opinion, that you just probably think we need to amend this? Well, first of all, I, I believe we should, we should also look at the chapter 4 of the Constitution. We talked about the fundamental human rights. There are certain things we should look into there. Then we we'll also look at the, 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 the directive principles, which uh, the, the constitution may not to be justifiable. So we need to look at it also, so that that section of the constitution, uh, for me, it should be justifiable, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if we look at it, then we we'll also look at the executive powers. You know, the constitution conferring executive powers to the president, to the governors, and all the We should also look at all those areas because uh, I think the, the, the executives, they are abusing that uh, area or that section of the constitution. And also, uh, it is in that area we we'll look at how we can work at that edit the powers of the executive. And uh, secondly, we should also, you know, have a holistic approach of the constitution so that we can also have some other provisions. For example, the constitution provided for um, federal character and all the rest. But as, as, I, as me and you know, or if you don't know me, I know that we are not even in any way comply with the provisions of the Constitution. And secondly, I think we should also look at inciting a provision in the Constitution that will also make it criminalize it when people do not really abide by the provision of the Constitution, whether the executive, whether the legislator, or whether the judiciary, so that there will be a penalty for people who realize the provisions of the Constitution. So how easy is it to draft a new constitution or even um, just amend this constitution? Who are the key factors? Um, does the public have any role to play? Or is it just some select few that just comes together and say, we want to amend this constitution and this is what we want to do? What is the process like? I just want you to walk me through it. So we have the National Assembly there. That is the... Uh they are, they are major function, uh, as far as the law is concerned. But uh, you should also remember that, despite the fact they are there, they are representing people. They are representing senatorial zones, uh, federal zones, constituencies, and all the rest. And it is also the law that uh, while you are here, 
if there is going to be amendment or anything that is going to happen, you should first of all go and consult with your constituency. That is what we call public opinion. Mm. And consulting with your constituency, uh, there will be stakeholders meetings, there will be town hall meetings, you know, people will be carried along. People will, will tender uh, their own input and all the rest. Why the National Assembly members go back home, consult their constituencies, have town hall meetings with them and all the rest. So they are the body the responsibility of amending the constitution because their major function is to make laws for the country. Mm. So what are some, if you were to criticize the constitution, um, I just need maybe like two or three. If you were to criticize this current constitution that we have and say we need to change that, what would be your own criticism um, to the constitution and what would be some things that you personally would add so for instance one of these lawmakers has come to your constituency and you're trying to give your own public opinion and say this is what we want especially for my own constituency what are some things that you would want to put in there yeah first of all uh, i will personally uh advocate that we we actually have one single legislative arm instead of the Senate and the National Assembly and the, and the House of Reps because mm. uh, it is money consuming as uh, far as I'm concerned. In fact, if you look at this very well, uh, the vote chambers are being attempted. As far as I'm concerned, yes, they are being attempted. So why, why that? And secondly, we should also look at the powers conferred on the on the state assemblies and all the rest. So the the the, the, the bureaucratic you know movement or the bureaucratic uh, system where laws are being passed. Thirdly, I will also advocate that we also look at the uh, the process of recalling recalling a legislator. You so come back on in this country that. It is a mission almost impossible for you to recall a legislator representing people. Because the, the essence of, 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 of democracy is that when somebody is elected or promoted to have been elected by the people and the person goes there and is not doing what the people want him to do, there should be you know, an avenue. The, the citizens will, will recall the person you know, and maybe put in another person. The, the process here is so cumbersome. Also, I will also want us to look at the powers of the executive, like I've said, uh, where the president almost uh, has, uh, well, I call it 99.9% .9 of the powers in, 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 in Nigeria and all the rest. You know, the powers to appoint these, appoint the, uh, the INEC chairman, appoint the, the, CJ, uh, the CJN. Appoint, so, the, the, because, for example, he would say that. Um, INEC is independent in Nigeria, and the president also has the only sole responsibility of appointing the INEC chairman. We are not moving forward. That is not democracy, as far as I'm concerned. So we'll have to look at some of these processes and so many other things that will move the country forward, because uh, people are moving forward. We cannot, you know, stay behind. Mm. I mean, I like the fact that you just um, highlighted the president being able to appoint all of um, these people, right, in power. And uh, because that was even something I was going to ask, something about power distribution. Because if you look at, you know, this, for instance, maybe we've been talking about the state police um, for a while now. But if you look at it, the power is centralized with the IGF police. We have just one IGF police and that everyone comes under him. So do you think this constitution will be able to, you know, just add address issues like power distribution, resource control, and federalism as a whole, because this is supposed to be the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Um, do you even think we're practicing that at the moment? And if this constitution will be able to address such issues? Yes, we know that everybody in this country knows that uh, Nigeria is the Federal Republic of Nigeria, but we are not even practicing through federalism. That mm. is the thing. And that is why I say that uh, we should also have it as a law that so that when you are in office and you are not in tandem or complying with the provisions of the constitution, you should be you should be criminalized. You should be made a criminal offense so that people will know and people can pay for what they have done. So I do not continue serving as a discipline for anybody that is that is coming in. So as far as I'm concerned, we are supposed to set up all these things, practice what is called true democracy and true federalism. But let me let me tell you one thing. 
Through federalism, you cannot through, talk about democracy without through federalism. And that is why today, what we are fighting in Nigeria today, whether we like it or not, is what I call party democracy. <laughs> so we must look at all these things holistically and tell ourselves the truth. The problem we have is that we don't want to tell ourselves the truth. Anybody that enters as a president will want to do it in our own way. Why? Because of the powers that the constitution has been voted in the president or until, you know, the, that, that position of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mm. That is all the truth. Okay, so have there been any way where we've tried to amend this constitution in the past? Was it successful? And, you know, do you even know of any other country that have been able to do this over time? And then they get like a very good result on this? Yes, of course. If you remember, when we are, uh, I think before it was 1989 constitution, before we go to 1999, and even before that time, there have been series of amendments. But my problem is this. We have not only touched the key areas where we are supposed to have a holistic amendment mm. in order to make sure that there is true democracy and true federalism. If you like, you talk about countries, look at a uh, country like uh, Burkina Faso and some other African countries that are moving forward. Look at uh, uh, South Africa, for example. The, the former president of South Africa is even serving a jail term. Why? Because of the constitution. Because the constitution is not a center of any man. Right. But we are the constitution respecting the, the, the law. We are respect some people. In fact, let me tell you the truth. People have always argued and have always even argued that there are two sets of laws operating in Nigeria, one for the poor and one for the rich. <laughs> so, and, and what is it telling? Yes, we are saying that democracy is all about rule of law. And what is rule of law? Equality before the law. And you and I know that in this country, everybody is not to fall to the law. We are more like trying to practice this animal farm believes that all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. That is the point we have. And it is only the constitution that can solve this problem. Mm. So, <laughs> well, we are not all equal. Clearly, as you've said, you know, the constitution is for some people. But then... But, but, but we are supposed to be all equal. That is the quality before the law. We are supposed to be all equal. If the president can be... Okay, you remember the time of... Uh, I was in a Clinton when he was accused of the uh, uh, scandal and all the way. I mean, in, in a country where anybody that is a chief executive officer somewhere becomes a delete god. So how do you expect that country to move forward? Mm. Okay, so my next line of question talks about the public, the civil society organizations, the public. What role do we have to play? to ensure that you know the constitution is holistic like you've rightly said we need one that is not just for some select few people or that you know kind of protects because in a way it seems the constitution is drafted in, in such a way that it protects some people it gives immunity to some people we want something that it makes everybody equal and the constitution is no respect of anybody everyone has to respect this constitution so what does the civil service organization and the general public um what role do they have to play in all of this to ensure that we have a better constitution in nigeria Hey, you know, as you're asking this question, I'm just laughing. You know why I'm laughing? Why? It's because, you see, let me tell you, people may not like what I would say. You may not... But it is your opinion, uh, so you should be able to speak freely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. But, but you see, I, I, am, I, I am in that field. I know what I'm saying, and I know what we are going through. The truth of the matter is that we lack what I call sincerity of purpose. <laughs> Yes. Many, many people you see today that say they are civil society organizations, they have human rights lawyers, human rights, they are just doing them for their selfish interest. And that is why, when any of them or any group of them gets one political appointment or the other, you see them, they don't do anything again. Mm -hmm. So that's why I talk about lack of sincerity of purpose. The common interest must be for the totality of the nation. We are supposed to be looking at how to salvage this country, how to prepare ground for our children and our children yet unborn. If you go to the Western world, most of the countries today that their parents are doing well, they don't even have a child. So who are you working for? Who are they trying to make the society to be better for? Why do not even have children? They are here. We do not have children. Nobody is talking about leaving a legacy and a good framework 
because everybody thinks getting a dual citizenship. Maybe your children have citizenship of one Western country or the other is the best. We are, we are shooting ourselves on the leg. There's no two ways about it. Nigeria is our own, and nobody can come here to do it for, for us or to better it for us. We must do it ourselves. So what I'm trying to say, I have been here, and I am still here. At times, let me tell you the truth. It is even for person to even record that at times what you are even fighting for. The totality of what you're fighting for, for the interest of the people, the people of the general public, some of them you're fighting for, are even the ones castigating you. Population. <laughs> but that is the truth. So what we need is what I call sincerity of purpose. And because of the kind of government we're running, everybody wants one way or the other to get into government by act or by omission, by hook or by crook. Everybody now believes that it's a national case. Let me go and take my own. So we can continue this way. We must tell ourselves the truth. Okay. Even if it is not better during my time, then we should be able to be happy and to be proud that even when we leave this world, our names will be written on gold. Our names will be remembered. Let me give you an example. I am from Imo State. The best governor we have had in Imo State is late Dr. Sam on that. Mm. Oh, there's something wrong with the um, internet provider, I guess. And we've seemed to lost this audio because it's cracking. Um, anyway, so we've just been talking about drafting a new constitution. So some ex-governors, some lawmakers have come out to um, speak on the Nigerian constitution and um, how we need to probably rejig it, how we need to reconfigure it. Maybe not change it entirely, but have some um, specific line items to ensure that it is a holistic one for, for everyone. And so we've just been talking with Justice Oegbe, a human rights lawyer. He was joining us from Abuja um, and just having the conversation. And in fact, my, my final question was going to be, um, how do we start to push the government to ensure they have this new constitution or the constitution reforms? Do we have Justice Oegbe right now? Hello, sir. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, I think it was network. Okay, finally. Okay, so I was also going to ask you, what are some um, potential... Um, impacts we can see with a new constitution, like positive impacts, and how do we even start to um, push the government for this new constitution, for a constitutional reform or recon reconfiguration, if I, can, if I can say that. So what are some positive impacts that everyone in Nigeria would definitely um, see and even feel as well if we have a new constitution, if we have an amended constitution that is now holistic? Fine. First of all, let me say this, that um, I go back to the issue of the federal purpose again. Like, for example, if our legislators they are sincere to themselves, they can do the job. What they can do is there's nothing there. That is why they were elected. That is why they are there. And when we have a proactive president, uh, if any amendment comes up and gets his office for action, he should not hesitate to sign it because everybody knows what is good. Yes. And uh, when you look at it very well, you see, the essence and the major advantage of a good constitution is that it will carry everybody along. Mm. It will make all the citizens to feel belong. It will make all the citizens to feel, you know, to feel like okay, this issue of. Um, I am from here, I am from here. In fact, let me, let me shock you. I propounded a theory which I call the Wonder Bill. Mm. And that is the only thing that can solve the major problem of this country. I know you'll be asking me what is the Wonder Bill. Yes, I'm about to ask you that. <laughs> Enlighten me. Let me give you an example, example and an insight of the Wonder Bill. Okay. Even you, when you were looking for jobs, Mm -hmm. Go to federal parasitals, federal agencies, ministries, states, local government. Once you are given a form to steal, you see, first of all, your name, surname, and other names. Yes. The next thing you see, local government. The next thing you see, state of origin. Mm -hmm. You see where our problem lies in the constitution. Why are you asking me my state of origin? Why you should ask me nationality? Mm -hmm. I am a Nigerian. You cannot go to America and ask somebody, are you from where? He tells you he's from Florida or mm. New York. He will tell you I'm from the United States of America. That gives you 
that confidence to say that you are a citizen of America. When right. you see nationality, you write Nigeria. That gives you the confidence to know that you are a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and not Igbo, not Aosa, not Yoruba. Mm -hmm. The only ask is their religion. Let's leave that one. <laughs> but this issue of state of origin, what for? Right. You are already dividing the country yourself. <clears throat> the government is already dividing the country itself. Mm. Making people to know that they are from different tribal ethnicity. Instead of making people to unite as one, as Nigerian. Right. That is what I call the Wonder Bill. And that is the only thing that can save this country. Okay. The well, moment, the, the moment an Alpha man, an Indian man, a Yoruba man, or whatever tribe begins to see him or herself as a Nigerian mm. and not as a tribal distinct, yeah. our problem is 90% solved. Well, I hope, I hope that would work and I hope that would. Um, you know, possibly being a constitution, the wonder bill, as you've just said. Um, but yes, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. We want to say thank you for coming. It was nice having a conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right. Have a nice day. We've been speaking with Justice Wig, who is a human rights lawyer, who's joining us from Abuja. And we've just been talking about um, the Nigerian constitution and how ex-governors or lawmakers, you know, have just called for, demanded, in fact, for a new one. We're still looking at it. Maybe we can have a new one or we can just amend it. Well, we never know. We'll just see how it develops. Anyways, we have to go on a short break. And when we return, we'll be looking at our second hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>